on this one I'm going to talk some about the solar panels I have put solar panels on the house well in the property anyway and they've over the years I've added to them I started out with 14 then I had 28 and I ended up with 56 total after a few years this is all DIY stuff so uh, it isn't always fast especially with me I'm slower than heck because I'm an old old man anyway uh, last summer we had a uh, hail storm uh, golf ball size hail lots of damage uh, roofs mostly siding so on like that I did not have any damage on my solar panels uh, but the roof was damaged and so they had to replace the roof so the one complication with these solar panels is you do have to pull off the panels if you have to replace the roof. Now the roof was less than five years old when I put it on, so uh, when I put the panels on. And uh, I should note that I had two arrays on the house, two 14 uh, panel arrays on the house, one facing south, one facing west. Uh, once the panels were pulled off and they were stored here at my place and I have I have some acreage so you know I'm not too tight on space uh, I decided that instead of putting them back on the roof when the roof was replaced I would go ahead and uh, mount them like they are right here uh, a ground mount. Now I made the, up the framework for these ground mounts. There's two ground mounts. One's uh, on the north side of the house, that's this one, and the other one's on the south side of the house. I have not messed with any of the rest of the panels. They're on the shop and there's 28 panels on the shop. The reason I pulled them off, or did not put them back on the roof, is I did have a failed uh, microinverter. Interestingly, it was not a really failed microinverter. It was, uh, someone had dropped it at some point, and it was actually damaged. So, anyway. Uh, but I had to take it off. Now, taking you know, doing any service on these things with them flat on the roof, it's not impossible, and a younger man could do much better than I could, but you have to lift the panel up, you have to dig around in there, try to get this thing out and get it back in. And at the time I was dealing with a uh, some pretty bad knees, so <laughs> I, uh, it was not fun to do. And so I decided that I would do ground mounts. Now these ground mounts are a little different than some because this is a tubing steel framework. I did uh, something similar on the south side of the house uh, in which I used uh, five pieces of framework that were buried in the ground and then I tied them all together and put the panels on. Uh, this one on the north was a little different. I actually made an entire framework and it's not dug in the ground. It does have a uh, dead man, a couple of dead mans on it. Uh, so if there's any wind issues. We do have high wind here. Uh, this is kind of a wind shadow because of the trees right behind it. But uh, uh, the dead men are just, they're kind of a safety thing anyway. Uh, if I have to do any repairs on these things, it's much, much easier on ground mount. It's just so much easier. And, you know, if, if we'd had this um, hail, uh, hail storm and these were ground mount, it wouldn't have done anything. Even if it had damaged some of the panels, um, it would have been simple to replace. And it wouldn't have been all that tough on the roof, but it, could, it 
it was it's just harder you don't have any way to get behind the panels in order to uh, do any repairs on them. so that's what I thought I'm just going to go ahead and ground mount these things and be done with it now, I've still got 28 panels on the shop and I'm contemplating another 12 panels and I haven't decided whether they're going to be in the shop or they're going to be on a, a ground mount system but uh, I like ground mount better it's just kind of a better way to do it and I will also want to note something if you look close behind me there's one of the panels is uh, the glass is cracked on that was my mistake uh, when I was uh, mounting the panels I mounted the two vertical panels here just a little too close to each other when they expanded they contacted each other and it broke that one that panel still produces full power I haven't changed it because it, it hasn't hasn't been a problem with it so I'm sure it will fail after a while but that was that was my fault so uh, that's where we're at uh, once I did the ground mount I couldn't tell a lot of difference between it and the roof mounting the roof mounting is higher and there's a, a considerable number of trees and stuff around here but they don't really seem to affect the panels where they're placed so uh, I kind of a I'm pretty positive on ground mount but uh, we'll see whether I if I do put another array up we'll see if I'm going to change that I may change it and uh, I'll put it on the roof uh, there's a lot of pluses and minuses either way uh, I am also working on a battery backup system I think everybody's going to have to have this. I'm going to talk more on it later, but uh, for right now, I'm uh, I'm considering a battery backup for this whole system. Uh, I mean, right now I'm. It's the middle of well, not the middle of summer, the end of summer, and I'm 6,000 uh, kilowatts to the good. That means I have produce 6,000 more kilowatts than uh, I've used uh, throughout this year so far so uh, I'm not sure how it's going to end up I think I'm going to have about 8,000 kilowatts extra that's part of the reason for the battery backup so uh, until the next time I talk about this hopefully I'll be uh, doing more videos on this pretty soon uh, if I get this battery back up in, we'll start uh, working with that and deciding how it's going to work out. But anyway, that's where we're at right now. Uh, the entire house is powered by solar. Not all the time, obviously, because there's no battery backup. But uh, overall, it is powered with a, an excess a considerable excess of solar energy that I'm giving back to the uh, uh, the utility. Anyway, that's it on that one, and hopefully we'll have another one up pretty soon.